Right. Shush Andrew, not now. Okay, here's an Abloy Classic. I'm going to zero all the discs with a blank. Right. Now I'm going to show why you cannot rely on the lock binding up from rear to front because I don't know if you've picked many locks but um, generally that doesn't happen you won't get a particular brand of lock that always binds up front to rear, rear to front or um, in any particular order it's just not how it works so yeah, let's zero that one back so let's start picking the lock that one's binding so you're okay great this one nothing absolutely nothing on that so what do you do at this point? If your tool can only go from rear to front, what do you do at this point? <coughs> you could take a guess and say, well, this is normally a 5, or usually a 5. So we'll pop it in the 5 position. But what if it isn't? You're guessing at this point. When you're guessing, then you're not picking locks. And as it happens, this isn't a 5 in this lock. So we're going to leave it at 0 anyway. That one, OK, I can get a bit of feeling on that. I'll leave that round to there. That one, nothing not binding at all. That one was binding. That's nicely in a gate now. The one that was actually binding next is the one I'm on now. It's this one. And you can see it's right up here. What, seven discs up? So if your tool can only go from rear to front, how do you pick a lock like this that doesn't happen to bind up in perfect from rear to front? Now, if your tool can go from front to rear and rear to front, you also have to remember you need to be able to put one at a five and another at a zero and still manoeuvre to the full range without disturbing them. See, that one's there. Yeah, let's move it right round to zero. So, I'm moving this one round and you can see, well, I am disturbing them. I'm disturbing them within the allowable amount which if you'd have read my essay you will know is six degrees so there you go just a quick demonstration as to why your tool can't only go from rear to front